first question I would ask is, where's my head? <laughs> you know, what am I thinking? You know, what's my mood? You know, sometimes like if you come into the studio and you've had something bad happen in your life or something negative is going on in the world, now you have to be, you know, sparkle plenty. You have to ask yourself, what's my purpose? What am I here for? You know, what do I want to achieve? What do I want to accomplish? What I want to accomplish really is to educate people about all the different things that are going on in the world. You know, one of the things I always say is these, these opinions are just my opinions. It doesn't mean your opinions aren't valid. Very important question I ask myself is that when you're an interviewer, you know, there's two types of interviewers. There's those interviewers that just are opinionated. You know, they have, they have an agenda and that's it. And they're going to put the agenda, they're going to put all kinds of guests on that are really going to support that agenda and that's it. I don't want to do that. I want to be neutral. I don't want to have an agenda. I mean, I do have a stand that I take. I mean, I do have a belief system. But I have to kind of let that out, let that on the sideline when I'm, I'm interviewing somebody because I want to be neutral. I want to bring their story forward without my opinions. Although what I will do is if I feel that they're a little bit off the wall and we need to explore something, I'll ask them questions on that particular topic they're talking about. Number one, to get a little clarity on it. And number two, to make sure that they're kind of in line with the philosophy of the show. The biggest challenge of the show is, is in all the years I've done the show, I've only interviewed three men. Two of them were from men, men evolving nonviolently, and I thought that was a good program that women should know about in case they're having domestic problems in their home. And the second interview I did was with, uh, with uh, um, Arlene Francis' son, who owns the uh, Arlene Francis Center. And I figured Arlene Francis is gone, so I only had him, but what I did was is I brought a woman in, and so I had the woman and him, and we did an interview together. But I have strictly kept it to women. And, and that has been a challenge, because I've been accused of many, many things. I've been accused of being a sexist. <laughs> I've been accused of being all kinds of things. And I say no. I said, I want a program dedicated to women, ordinary women doing extraordinary things because it will give other women courage. And you know, we have to stand up in today's world. You know, we really have to stand up in today's world. I was a counselor at a women's facility called Athena House. And this gentleman came in and he asked if anybody did radio. I looked around the room, nobody raised their hand, but I raised my hand and I said, well, I said, when I went to Los Angeles City College, I was a journalism major. I got my AA degree in journalism and my minor was public relations. I said, and I also did the sports announce, you know, the sports scores and the weather report. <laughs> I said, does that qualify me for radio? And he said, do you have a microphone in front of you? I says, well, yeah. And he says, well, that's radio. And he pulled me down to KBBF and they put me on the air. Well, I didn't know what, what, what was I going to do? You know, hey, they're going to give me a whole hour to be on radio. What, what do you do on radio? So I went and I was talking to a friend of mine and we start talking. And I said, well, you know, it'd be nice to have a space for women. He said, oh, that's it, women's spaces. In this room, I could produce shows. And he started showing me all the equipment, and I thought to myself, I am not a technical person. I will never be able to do that. And he said, no, you know, you just relax yourself just a little bit at a time. I took about two or three classes with it. I had my husband in there. He was kind of helping me. But oh my goodness, I said to myself, no way am I going to be able to run this equipment. And then we were in there for about an hour, about an hour and a half, and then he started filming. You know, we were sh he was showing me how to film, and then he showed me the film. And I said to myself, wait a minute, Steve, I don't like what I see there. You know, I saw this woman 
that was not, you know, 25 years old and, and as beautiful as I was then, I saw an older woman and I, was, I could see every wrinkle on my face and I said, no way, no way am I going to do this. And I, I literally started to cry. I mean, I was so upset because I had not recognized that ha I had been aging. You know, I never had looked at myself on camera like this. And so we went out for a cup of coffee and we started talking. And what Ken said to me is, Elaine, you got to let your spirit out. You got to let your inside out. You got to let your light shine. And as your light shines, you become beautiful. He said, but if you frown or you look uptight, of course you're going to look older. And you, can't compens you cannot compare yourself to other people. Well, at the same time, my grandson was having a little bit of issues at uh, daycare. And I picked him up, and he, his name is Ryan Jensen. He was about five and a half years old, and he was crying. And I said, Ryan, what's the matter? And he says, my teacher told me that I was a bad boy. And I said, wait a minute. You are not a bad boy. You're a good boy. You're a wonderful boy. You're a strong boy. And I said, I want you to repeat after me. And I gave him this affirmation. My self-esteem does not depend on anything outside of me. My self-esteem depends on my relationship with my higher power. And it was interesting because I had to explain to him what higher power was. I mean, he's only five or six years old. So I wrote down that affirmation and I start doing it. And then what I did as I started moving towards the television show, I start using that affirmation for myself. My self-esteem doesn't depend on anything outside of me. In other words, why am I worried that people are going to judge me that I'm old or I'm not saying the right things? I'm just here to present. And my self-esteem doesn't depend on what you think of me. My self-esteem depends on my relationship with myself and my higher power. And that has really brought me a long way. And so I was able to go into Live Link and do the first show. But the whole idea is if you keep doing it, you're going to get better and better and better. And I script everything. So I, I would recommend people scripting things. Because otherwise it sounds like, you know, people say, it just sounds like some, some of those shows, you know, it sounds, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. I said, well, it's, it's, it's the media center. It's creative. You know, people need to be able to produce and be creative. You can't put a limit on them. But I would suggest to most people that when you're doing a show to do some script, to do a storyboard so you have some clarity because you have to ask yourself the question, am I doing this show for my entertainment? Well, if you're doing it for your entertainment, then do it the way you like it and don't expect any public. But if you're doing it because you feel you have a, a message or you want to project something to the public, you want them to learn something, script it, get a little tight on it, you know, so it, it becomes clear. And in the clarity, you attract more people because they don't look at you as, oh, you know, like you're kind of goofy. They look at you more, you're trying to give a lesson. So I think people need to, when they produce, to really ask themselves that question. What is my purpose? What do I want to do? Do I want the public or is it just for me? And if it's just for you, that's one level. But if it's for the public and you want to get a message across, that's another level. And you really have to start thinking about it. You have to start thinking about what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. You know, even what you look like. I mean, it's all those things come into play. My self-esteem does not depend on anything outside of me. My self-esteem depends on my relationship with myself and my higher power. Or like Terry Cole Whitaker put it so beautifully and simply, it's what you think of me is none of my business. So that's kind of how I prep myself. And I always, I always ask the Great Spirit, I say, Great Spirit, guide me through this show and help me have a good show. And somehow it works. I always, before I hit that record button, I say that religiously, Great Spirit, be there for me. Give me a good show. And so every time it happens, so maybe the Great Spirit is with us. Who knows?